G'day guys, it's Imo here from Owl and Imo Handmade. It is winter here in Australia, which means Owl and I will be wearing our boots all day, every day. And to celebrate Blundstone's 150th birthday, we thought we'd create a boot and coat rack for our home. This is such a practical project for us because we are constantly walking sawdust from the workshop into our house. We decided to create a few different design variations because we know every home is different and you can find the detailed step-by-step -step instructions for all of these DIY projects online at alanimo.com.au. For this project, you will need timber for the frame. We used Victorian ash, which is a really beautiful Australian hardwood. However, for a more cost-effective option, you could use ply or pine. For the backboard, you'll need MDF, paint and a paint roller. And for the projects, you require wood glue, seal, sandpaper, brad nails, screws, three coat hooks, and a small bracket to attach your piece to the wall. This DIY project only requires standard carpentry tools. Okay, now it's time for Al to take over and he'll show you how to build it. Have fun. Hey guys, it's Al here. The first thing I did was cut the MDF to size using my table saw. You could also use a circular saw with a track guide. Then I handed it over to Imo to paint. We matched the colour white of our walls and did three coats. However, you could use any colour or even back your piece with matching hardwood. I took the two side pieces and marked each side so that the timber grain would match up later on. I cut using my drop saw. You could also use a circular saw. I joined the bottom sides and bottom shelves together by gluing and clamping, then I set it aside to dry. I cut all of the timber to length. To access the measurements, you can head over to alanimo.com.au. I ripped the joined pieces in half using my table saw. You could do this using a circular saw with a track. I then clamped a scrap piece of timber to my workbench and tested the router. When I was happy with the result, I moved on to the seat. I clamped it to the workbench and routed the front edges and two sides. Then I flipped it over and routed the bottom edges. To make it easier, when routing the corners, you can clamp a scrap piece of timber to the front edge to give your router more surface space to sit on. I sanded the routed edges smooth using my sander and used sandpaper by hand for the corners. I sanded all of the pieces to a 120 grit finish, making sure all of the glue, machine marks and any rough bits were removed. Now that all of the pieces were cut, it was time to build the coat and boot rack. I took the two bottom side pieces and from the bottom edge on the inside, I measured and marked where the shelves would sit. Now it was time to add the kicker. For this, I used my set square. Whenever I'm using a carpenter's square, it's important I have a super sharp pencil. I ran my square along the bottom edge and sides, marking a line. I glued along the bottom of the line, placed the kicker in position and made sure the edge was on the line that I drew. To ensure I didn't miss joining the top shelf to the kicker, I set my carpenter's square and marked a few nail spots along the top. Using my nail gun, I shot the kicker into place. I then also added clamps to the piece while the glue set. To join the seat to the base, the first thing I did was mark and countersink holes on an angle into the top inside edge of the bottom sides and sanded the screw holes smooth. I smeared glue on the top edge of the bottom sides and place my seat on top, checking to ensure it was sitting in the right place. Flush on the back edge with an even overhang on each side. Clamped it into place. I drilled a pilot hole up through the countersink holes, then followed with screws. I repeated this step with the other side. It was then time to join the top half. I took my two top sides, making sure the grain lines matched up to the bottom sides. I measured down from the top and marked. I took my carpenter's square and drew a line across the pieces. This is where the shelf would sit. Again, making sure I left a mark on the side of the line to show where to attach the shelf. I glued the top edges and used my nail gun to join the top to the two sides. I glued along the bottom of the line and slid the shelf into place, lining the top edge of the shelf on the line, then I nailed it into place. I sanded the pieces smooth, making sure to remove all of the glue and ensuring all joints were sanded flush. I countersunk and screwed to join the top to the base. I handed my finished piece to Imo to seal, 
She used the hard wax oil from fitters. We left the piece overnight to dry. Once it was dry, we joined the MDF backboard to the frame using our nail gun through the back. I measured and marked where we wanted to place the hooks and screwed them into place. We used a small bracket to fix to the top of the coat rack and attach it to the wall. You can access the detailed step-by-step -step instructions to this DIY project at alanimo.com.au